services management. I'll be covering Rachel's role while she's on away on maternity leave. So it's nice to meet many of you. And I look forward to having a chat directly in future opportunities. Um, also very pleased to have our chief exec on the call live today, Peter, and he will be presenting on the highlights of 2023 priorities for 2024 segment of the meeting. So before I get into the main body of the meeting, there's someone else that couldn't be here, but would also like to say a quick hello, and that's our IAPB president, Caroline. Greetings, everybody, and a very, very happy new year. Um, I know that I'm not going to be with you uh, today, what well, today being Monday, um, because I will be opening the Vision Council Conference in Florida, Naples. Somebody's got to do it. Um, and I'm talking from actually Davos here on Thursday, where I have been doing a lot of networking, uh, trying to see how we can get um, a necessary or avoidable sight loss on the agenda here. So it's been brilliant. Um, just huge thank you to every single one of you, both for your personal support and just the collective support of, of everybody in IAPB. And I just, I have a funny, I think I said this before, I think I have a feeling that we have a, a big year ahead and I'm really looking forward to it. So sorry I'm not going to be there, but have a great meeting. And I hope to God I don't let you down from Vision Council. Okie doke. Bye. So, um... The point of today is to gather to start the year on a quick reminder of what we've achieved in 2023, as I said. Set priorities for 2024, give you a sneak peek of activities for the year, get your thoughts and any questions that you'll have. So I'll quickly set an agenda. So first, I'll hand over to Peter throughout his presentation. If you have any questions, please put those in the chat. And at the end of each presentation, we'll open for a Q&A where we'll go through the, the ones raised in the chat box and you can where, and you can also have, raise your hand during this section. Um, following that, I will outline some upcoming activities and then once again, open for questions. Uh, any questions that we don't have time for, we'll address those in a follow-up email. So let's welcome Peter. Sammy, thank you very much indeed and welcome. And it's fantastic uh, to see so many people. Uh, it's morning here. I suspect it's not morning for everybody, but uh, hello and uh, and great to great to see you. And thank you very much for joining us. Um, I just want to add my welcome to Dami, who's taken on Rachel's role, as she said. And many of you, I'm sure, will have met and know Rachel uh, and and have worked with her closely. Uh, so Dami is the new Rachel. So if you have any queries, I know Dami would be delighted to hear from you, and I'm sure she'll be in touch with you. Uh, often over over the next few months. Um, as Dami has said, what I want to talk a bit about is what we did last year and then a look ahead to what our priorities are for uh, for this year. So I'll I'll talk I'll probably talk for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and as Dami said, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat and hopefully there'll be a little bit of time at the end of when I'm speaking if people want to put up their hands and ask some questions. Um, I was the culprit as to why we were starting late because I couldn't get my system to work. So, uh, Becky, I think you're going to show the slides. So would you mind putting the slides show up? Just working would, now for you. You would think by now we would have mastered oh. Zoom, but um, sadly, we are uh... No. Great. Thank you. That, that was there. That was there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, okay. Everyone please. see that? Okay. Can we move to the next slide? So just a quick reminder of uh, our main our main roles and and what we do, particularly from the Secretariat. So uh, firstly, we lead on global advocacy for the sector generally. So we work obviously a lot with World Health Organization, uh, the United Nations and global institutions and increasingly are working at regional and country level. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the second area, which is relatively new for us in the past two or three years, has been developing a public campaign globally. You'll have seen that in terms of World Sight Day and Love Your Eyes, and that's both about raising awareness about the importance of eye health, but also supporting our advocacy efforts as well and getting public support for, uh, for the advocacy message, messages we have. Uh, the third area is our knowledge work, our informed work, where obviously you're the experts, but we use our platforms 
to share knowledge across the sector. And obviously we publish that, I guess the most obvious public profile we have is the, the Vision Atlas, which I'm sure many of you will know. And then the final area is, uh, is connecting, convening meetings, bringing people together. Uh, obviously we held uh, the big global event in Singapore last year. Can I have the next slide, please. Two years ago, uh, at the end of 2021, actually, we agreed a new strategy for the sector as a whole, really moving on from the work of Vision 2020. So this, this strategy, which we call 2030 Insight, uh, these are the, the, the key goals, and they're obviously extremely ambitious, but by 2030, we want to see a world where no one experiences unnecessary or preventable sight loss and everyone can achieve their full potential. Where eye care and rehabilitation services are accessible, inclusive and affordable to everyone everywhere whenever they're needed. And that people understand the importance of caring for their own eye health and demand access to services free from the weight of any social stigma. Um, so those were the, uh, uh, those, are, those are the goals. And can I have the next slide, please, Becky, thanks. And there were three essentially key pillars to the strategy of what we want to do. So firstly, is to really elevate and elevate the profile of, of eye health, particularly embedding vision and eye health as fundamental economic, social and development issues. And this is particularly about making the case globally and with political leaders and decision makers worldwide about how important eye health is, not just as a healthcare issue, but in terms of driving economic, social and broader development. The second area, and I guess this is probably the area where as a sector we're most familiar, is around integrating and incorporating and integrating eye health as part of the wider, wider health care systems, both as part of universal health coverage, but also into mainstream health systems. And this obviously builds on the work that the, uh, the WHO launched through uh, their World Report on Vision in 2019, and then the subsequent World Health Assembly resolutions around encouraging integration of eye health into mainstream health systems. And then the third area is which we're calling Activate, and this really has two, two elements to it. Firstly, it recognizes that many people receive many of their eye care services through the market and through private sector providers, and particularly that's true of access to refractive error services and glasses. But Often though, but if that's going to work, those services need to be affordable and accessible. So you want to see markets where you can actually provide affordable and accessible glasses. And at the same time, you need people to be aware of their needs for eye health and eye care and, and demand those services. So Activate is both about getting those markets to work, but also to drive awareness and drive demand for eye care as well. Uh, could I have the next slide, please? Obviously, the context is extremely challenging. Um, you will know this better than me, but we are still, and particularly those of us working across the healthcare space, are still obviously emerging from all the challenges uh, of COVID and, and the post-COVID world. And that, of course, has been compounded by uh, we're really living through an era of global crisis, both political, political and economic crisis. And I'm sure many of your colleagues uh, working at country levels are confronting this on a day-to-day -day basis. That's having direct impacts on us. We see fewer resources, and I'm sure that's something that you've been experiencing across the board, and costs have been going up. Uh, and again, certainly in the Secretariat, we've seen that, but I'm sure that's something that you confront on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, that, that that is an extremely challenging context to be working in. I think there are some glimmers of light. One of the things that struck me last year is that there is really continued political support for what we're trying to achieve. And we see that particularly at a global level within the UN, WHO, that countries do support the work that we're doing on eye health and actually are increasingly committed to trying to, to, to deliver on that. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in terms of some of the work that we're doing. Um, a year ago, I would have said that there was a growing gap between the commitments that were being made in the global in global fora, such as the commitments around the uh, first resolution on vision at the United Nations or the targets that were being set at the World Health, Health Assembly, uh, and the action that was being taken at country level. 
Um, there is still a significant gap. There's still that, and I think this is, and again, I'll return to this, that the real focus for us needs to be on closing that gap and getting countries actually to deliver on what they've committed to, uh, to globally. But I think we're beginning to see in a few cases that countries are beginning to respond to that and are actually taking those commitments seriously and that is beginning to drive some action that's happening. But this is on at the moment on an individual basis. We're not seeing that across the board, but we are beginning to see some action happening. Uh, and, and I think that for me, that is a little bit more encouraging than perhaps where we were a year ago. And the uh, next slide, please. Um, back in the end of 2022, uh, our board um, agreed a number of priorities for the Secretariat that we should focus on over the next three years. So they set the plan for and the priorities for us in the period between 2023 and 2025. Uh, and these were the these were the top priorities that they set. So first, firstly, obviously, global policy and advocacy remains a key priority for us. But but there were some new priorities coming onto the agenda, particularly focused around refractive error and getting refractive error up the agenda, getting markets to work effectively, as I've mentioned already. And we also wanted to advocate for a special envoy on vision at the UN, a UN Secretary General special envoy, to really make the case and, and bring together the various global institutions uh, across the board. Uh, secondly, and building what I was just saying, we wanted to focus on translating the global commitments that we've achieved through our global policy and advocacy down to na national action, really translate that, though, though, as I say, those global commitments into action on the ground. The third area that we wanted to look at was around systems leadership capability. We recognized that the strategy that was set out 2030 in sight is around changing the system. And that's not just the healthcare system, but it's actually working across a whole range of other uh, sectors as well, whether that's education, the economy, with businesses and employers. And I think one of the uh, areas that we felt we needed to strengthen across the sector was actually our ability to think and act in that way across the system as a whole, rather than focusing on the specific delivery of ICA projects. Uh, the fourth area was to continue to grow our campaign and the campaign's capability. So making those connections, both in terms of uh, building awareness around the importance of eye health, but also making the links between getting and getting public support for some of our advocacy goals as well. And then the fifth area was to deliver a vision observatory. So we had the vision atlas, but what we wanted to turn that into was a much broader repository of data, which looked at a whole range of aspects across uh, eye health and eye, eye care and across, across the world. And so turn that into a vision observatory rather than just a vision atlas. I'll return to some of these as I go through. So let me look at what we have been doing and some of the highlights of what uh, we've done over the past year. So firstly, if I look at the Elevate and the Global Advocacy Agenda, uh, a few things we were, we've been holding in, in the UN, uh, where we've seen, we've really seen continued commitment from, uh, from UN lead, from leaders at, at the United Nations. So back in September, we held a breakfast meeting alongside the UN General Assembly. Uh, which was attended by we had three prime ministers there and 15 other ministers from 50, 15 ministers from 15 other member states uh, and a number of the global institutions. And it was actually a really successful, it, it really was a successful meeting in terms of the kind of level of commitment in, and engagement that we got from the people who, turned, who came along. Normally these things, people come along, they make their uh, presentation and then they run away and leave. We actually had most of the ministers staying there for half an hour longer than actually it was in, it was scheduled to to last, and actually that was a reflection of the fact that actually many of them were really quite personally committed to the to the agenda, uh, and I think it's quite encouraging. And I'll return to some of the conclusions we've drawn about what we then need to do to build on that kind of support. Um, we also held a photo exhibition in the United Nations on eye health and eye care uh, around World Sight Day, and that was quite well attended with people. That was in the main. UN uh, foyer, so a lot of people actually got to see it. Um, practically, we've begun to take the commitments that were set out in the resolution and begin to build some practical relationships. So we've established a relationship with the International Labour Organization and have worked with them and published a report last year on eye health and the world of work, looking at how important it is, how important good eye health is 
to actually uh, employers and employees. And we're now working with the ILO to actually turn that into practical action so that we can engage employers and get them much more focused and get them focused on how they actually ensure that their employees have access to, to eye care and to good quality eye care that they need. And so that's going to be an ongoing relationship that we have over the next, over the next few years. And, uh, and it's an example of the kind of partnership that we wanted to build out of the resolution so that, again, it's taking eye health out of debt. Uh, so it's not just seen as a healthcare issue, but we're, we're engaging other institutions and getting them on board with, with, the, with our priorities. Similarly, one of our members, the Fred Hollows Foundation, has established a similar relationship with UN Women, with UN Women, and looking at the relationships between eye health and gender. And they're taking forward a very similar approach with them. They published a report with UN UN Women uh, on eye health, uh, eye health and gender, and they're now taking forward that relationship as well. On the integrate side, now this is obviously an area where I'm sure many of you are engaged really on a day-to-day -day basis. We worked closely with the World Health Organization to help them establish the baseline data for the global targets. So back in 2022, some global targets were agreed at the World Health Assembly on refractive error and cataract services. And we need to, in order to be able to measure progress, we obviously need to establish what are the baselines for those targets across the globe. And that's quite challenging. So we've been working with members uh, again across the world to try to get together as much data as possible so we can set those baselines so we've now i'm working with members and working with who we've now got data for about 80 or 90 countries for those targets setting the baseline and obviously the next stage will be to begin to monitor that the next report from who they're aiming to aiming aiming to publish a next report later this year on progress towards the global target. So we'll see how that comes out then. On the um, Activate side, obviously we had another uh, very successful World Sight Day and Love Your Eyes campaign. Um, one of the things we've been trying to do much more is join up the communications between what we're doing in the campaign side and what we're trying to achieve around uh, our advocacy and knowledge agendas. So particularly this year, we focused on eye health and the world of work, and that obviously joined up very closely with the work that we've been doing with the ILO and made and was deliberately made to make that link between what we're doing there and the, with the policy work we were doing on uh, eye health and work and what we were trying to do on the campaign side. Can I have the next slide? Becky, can I have the next? Thanks. Um, so these are, I'm not gonna read all the figures, but these were some of the figures uh, around uh, what we achieved on uh, World Sight Day. So. We had a target again of this time of 10 million pledges for site tests and actually we got over 13 million which was great um obviously these numbers are very big one i'll particularly focused on is the social media impressions so these are the individual contacts from individual people who uh looked at the work that was going on around world site day so we had uh, for over 466 million social media um uh impressions uh, over World Sight Day. So we're, we're reaching almost half a billion people. Uh, and that's obviously is all the work that members are doing across the world, which, which means that, and, and that has really been our ambition to turn World Sight Day into a properly global campaign. And I think now that we're reaching you know, almost half a billion people, we're, we're certainly well on the way to achieving that. Um, it, the Advertising value equivalent figure. So what that is, is if we if we were going to spend money on advertising to have the kind of impact that we have through the work that we do on Love Your Eyes and World, World Sight Day, we would have to spend over 50, over $50 million to achieve it. And I think that's just an example of quite what the level of impact that the campaign is having. The next slide, please. Uh, and then... Uh, we were also getting re reach into the traditional media as well. Now, that was focusing particularly on Love Your Eyes at work and the work that's going on. We had over 170 pieces of coverage, reaching almost 52 million readers uh, in the traditional press. Uh, and these are some of the outlets where, uh, where articles were carried. So it gives you a sense of, again, the spread. And this was, again... Uh, all over the world that we were seeing seeing articles being carried. The next slide, please. 
So then the final areas that um, I want to touch on is just uh, just as it, some of the internal side of things. So we recruited 30 new members last year, which is great. Uh, so we've now got almost, I think we've got more than 200 members of IIPB, uh, which is great. We obviously held the event in Singapore. And as I mentioned, we're off to Mexico uh, this year. So I hope many of you will be able to join us there. Uh, one of our new members and one of our new partners is the Islamic Development Bank. And I think that's important because, again, it's about reaching out to new funders who not, won't just fund us, but will fund support across the sector. Uh, and then the final area that I just wanted to mention was we've been doing some work on actually establishing some indicators for the strategy so that uh, we can actually measure progress on implementing 2030 in sight. Um, Becky, you could have the next slide uh, for that. Um, so we've what we've... Um, uh, done is we've established a set of core summary indicators for each of the elements of the strategy for elevate, integrate, and uh, activate, and to uh, measure progress. And we've developed two new tools for both tracking commitments that countries are making, though that's that's the uh, for the elevate area, uh, and for monitoring progress on integration. And if you um, click on these QR codes. Uh, they will take you to the commitment tracker, which measure, measures those commitments, and the progress survey, which helps us assess progress towards uh, integration. Uh, and so those QR codes will show you that. We'll circulate the presentation after this, so you can um, can can do that after uh, after the the session. Um, we've so far been able to report on progress in twenty three countries uh, from last year, but we're aiming to collect data for 70 countries a year. To do that, we're gonna need all of your help in terms of, in terms of responding to this. So we, will, we can't do this ourselves. We absolutely rely on members to help us do that and using the QR codes and the links for doing that. Um, we're aiming to publish a full set of country data on the new Vision Atlas, which we're aiming to develop during this year so that this will all be publicly available and all be available to see uh, on the new Vision Atlas. Could I have the next slide, please? Um, so, oh, go, go back one slide, thank you. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're also developing a tool that enables uh, national level members and partners to map the implementation that you're doing at country level. And again, this QR code takes you to the, uh, to the link where you can complete an online survey to show that. And again, we aim to publish that and so have a map that's uh, available online through the Vision Atlas to, to show the progress that members are making as well. Uh, so this is all about showing the progress that across the board we're making in terms of delivering 2030 insight. Could I, um, could we go to the next slide, please? So there are some things that we didn't achieve. Um, so we did not get a, uh, a special envoy on Vision. Um, we've we've now had over, I think it's almost 80 member states have signed up and have called on the Secretary General to appoint a special envoy. We've had over 150 members uh, and other organisations call for it as well. However, um, the, at this stage, the Secretary General has, has basically said he doesn't plan to appoint an envoy. I think in part it's because he doesn't want to appoint any envoys at all, not just specifically one on vision. However, we will continue to campaign this. We do think this is something that would make quite a significant difference. So we will continue to campaign for a special envoy and uh, and keep pushing. But I suspect it will take some time to achieve that. We had hoped at this year's uh, World Health Assembly, so the World Health Assembly in 2024, that we would get a resolution on refractive error. However, that it is it didn't get onto the agenda this time round. However, we are going to be holding a side event at the World Health Assembly to raise the profile of re refractive error and uh, get more focus on it. So we get member states aware of how important it is. So we'll be doing that instead. And we've also decided to step back from the Vision Observatory and rather than focus on the Vision Observatory to really develop the Vision Atlas and bring in some of the, a lot of the functionality that we're talking about in the Vision Observatory into the next iteration of the Vision Atlas, and that particularly includes reporting on the indicators. Of the next slide. 
So um, some of the themes that the lessons that we've learned is that there are obviously significant connections across what we do. So we're, as I mentioned, we're trying to bring together what we do across the campaign with what we're doing in advocacy, but also crucially connections between what happens at a national and a global level. And I think a lot of the evidence that you bring from the work that you do is really critically important in terms of influencing uh, the global agenda and equally some of those, those commitments at global level are beginning to have an impact down at national level as well. Uh, working with you, our members are absolutely critical or really across the full range of the agenda that's, that we work, whether that's advocacy, whether that's the campaign, whether that's the knowledge that you share as well. What we recognize is that we need to provide greater support at regional level. At the moment, we only have a very small number of people who are really focused down at region. And one of the areas that we want to develop is increase the numbers of people who are focusing at regional and national level. Uh, we want to develop the capability building side, in particular, as I mentioned, focusing on le system leadership for those areas. We will continue to grow the membership, uh, and that's something that is remains a priority. So the more members we are, the more powerful our voice. Uh, but something, as I've mentioned already, that we're all facing is that costs are higher, and that's obviously having an impact on, on the scope of what we can do. Go on to the next slide. So, now look briefly at the priorities for this year. And these are really a continuation of what we're looking at. It's not a dramatic shift, uh, but we will be, uh, as I've mentioned, focusing on, continue to focus on advocacy at a global level at the World Health Assembly. We want to, we'll be holding the side event on refractive error. We will also be holding an event on diabetic retinopathy. Uh, there's a Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Samoa, uh, later in the year and we're hoping that again the Commonwealth Heads of Government will have a commitment to uh, eye health. They've done that at their previous two um, uh, Heads of Government meeting and we're hoping that that will continue this time around. And then there are two quite important uh, meetings on from the small island developing states and landlock developing countries where the UN is focusing and at both of these we're expecting to have an eye health focus. We're likely certainly to have a side meeting at the Small Island Developing States meeting. We're also looking at doing something at landlord developing countries so that we can have a real focus there. Uh, we will continue with the global, global campaign and World Site Day. Uh, this year, we'll continue with the focus on world of work, but we will also add another focus on children and education. So we'll be running effectively two campaigns, one around work and one around children and education. As I've mentioned, we will be developing the Vision Atlas uh, and bringing that further on, and particularly looking at adding the indicators and progress in there. As I mentioned again, uh, our next global event is 2030 Insight Live in Mexico on the 26th and 27th of June, I think those are the dates. So um, it would be great to see as many of you as possible there, that would be fantastic. Uh, and we will be beginning to strengthen our regional convening capability, so we want more we need a stronger team at the regional level. We've decided to focus on eight focus countries in particular to support them and particularly focus on how we can implement the strategy at a country level, particularly obviously working with members in those countries. Um, the folk, eight focus countries are, to test my memory, uh, Guatemala and Paraguay in uh, Latin America. Ghana and Zambia in Africa, uh, Laos and uh, Papua New Guinea in West Pacific, and Nepal and Indonesia in Southeast Asia. We're only having focus countries in those regions where we actually have a, uh, a regional coordinator or somebody who can actually lead that work. So that means that we don't currently have focus countries in Eastern Mediterranean or Europe or the Americas, but we're hoping is if we can develop teams there, we can bring that on as well. And then, as I've also mentioned, we want to, we will begin to develop uh, some courses and events around developing system leadership capability in the sector as well. And we'll begin to, you'll begin to see some of that coming on uh, and opportunities around that uh, in the coming months. Could I have the next slide, please? So the final thing I want to touch on is an ambition we've got for 2025. And at the moment, this is an ambition. This isn't absolutely set in stone. But building on the event that I mentioned that we held at the UN uh, in September, we think that this the time is right to try to hold a global summit on eye health. 
uh, and bring together political leaders from around the world, global institutions and funders as well to really have a real priority on eye health and to get both government and member state commitments, but ideally financial commitments and real commitments to practical action to deliver uh, the UN resolution that, that countries have signed up to. Now, as I say, this is a, an ambition. Uh, we don't yet have a venue or a date for this, but th this is something that we think uh, should be a priority for us and that we are really aiming to deliver. And as we begin to develop this, we will obviously keep you informed, uh, but I'm sure we will need all your support if we're going to make this a success. So at that point, I shall uh, wrap up and perhaps ask if there are any questions. Not compulsory. Um, <clears throat> um, Peter, I have a question. This is Jeff Todd at Prevent Blindness. Hi, Jeff. Um, I'm, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm sure we'll hear more about this, but um, I'm curious how you're going to manage, how we're going to manage the kind of the two separate approaches to World Sight Day. Um, are you... I, you know, I'll just share that, you know, we're already thinking about the school stuff, and I think that's going to be really exciting. Um, I'll have to think through whether or not we'll kind of do both things, or are you um, hoping that members kind of choose one or the other or or jump on the whole thing, or is it more or more to come? <laughs> yeah, so I so probably more of the more to come, but... Uh, I think the thinking is that uh, we wanted to give more more choice to members. So we recognised last year the focus on World at Work was was really successful, but for some members it it doesn't really doesn't really hit what they're what they're focusing on, what their priorities were, uh, and and so we felt that uh, you know children has been uh, on our list of priorities for some time. We felt offering offering the opportunity to look at children as well would enable some members who maybe don't find World of Work as something that would they would necessarily naturally focus on. It might give them the opportunity to have a priority that they could focus on as well. So, so we're definitely not looking for people to do both. Equally, if people feel they can do both, obviously that would be great. But, but it's really more to offer more opportunity. Thank, thanks, Peter. And I was also really um, interested in, in what you had to say about the Global Summit. Good luck with that. Yeah, we we may we may well need that. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> Frank, you got hi. Um, in um, the seven six World Health Assembly, uh, which took place in May two thousand twenty three, it was approved a resolution of the health of indigenous people, and the resolution recognized the significant uh, significant. Uh, health disparities faced by indigenous people around the world. And this resolution called for action, the strengthened health systems and services to better meet the needs of indigenous people worldwide. And uh, promoting this participation of indigenous people in health decision-making and addressing the social uh, uh, determinate, um, determinants of health that contributes to indigenous health. Is there any agenda of IAPB with WHO in this matter? Yes, thank you, Frank. Yeah. Um, uh, it's it, it, it obviously is an important area and, and the resolution itself obviously would cover eye health as much as any other uh, health issue. We actually have a small subgroup that is working specifically on indigenous issues and, uh, and the, the issues facing indigenous people and eye health. So Frank, if you're interested in that, we can. I'm very happy to connect you up with that group who are, who are specifically looking at those those questions. Okay, thank you. Um, we we'll, we should have some time for more questions at the end. So if they, if something occurs, please feel free to uh, to either put it in the chat or ask it ask those questions at the end. But I'm going to now hand over to Dami who can talk more specifically about some of the activities that we've got coming up over the next few months. So Dami, over to you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everyone. Now I'll just quickly share my screen. Uh, 
hope you can see that. Um, so as Peter mentioned, we have a bit of a peek into the year, um, several items that are upcoming that members can get involved in. Um, first on the list is the WHO updates on eye care that's being held on 8th of February. Um, the session will be on the latest updates from WHO's vision and eye care program, which includes the new SPECS 2030 initiative, some efforts to strengthen data collection and the WHO Eyes app that launched uh, during World Sight Day last year. Um, there will also be a section on how individuals and organizations can support some of these WHO efforts in achieving 2030 eye care targets. So all of you are welcome to join the meeting. You can scan the QR code to register. And again, I will share these slides after the meeting. So the second is a preview of the activity plan for the UN Friends of Vision group. Uh, for some newer members, the, the group um, consists of country representatives and its aim is to advance the issue of eye health within the context of the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, also aims to raise the profile of eye health on the international agenda and to share some knowledge within the se from the sector and among member states. So many of the activities of their planning includes an in-person meeting in February to start off the year, um, a high level side event as Peter mentioned as well at the Small Island Developing State Conference. Um, there will also be some voluntary and national review work going, so building on the success of last year with an increased number of member states, including language on national eye health progress to hold a, a national, a voluntary national review. And last night with mention, to mark World Side Day at the UN, and there's a plan to organize an eye exhibition and vision screenings at the UN uh, Secretary Lobby to raise the profile um, of healthy vision. So closer to each of these activities, more information will be shared out. So 2013 Insight Live, I've mentioned, is heading to Mexico City this year, and it will be on the 25th to the 27th of June. Um, we're pleased to announce that early bird tickets have already been made available as of another day last week, and point. Um, and please, um, scan the QR code for registrations and share with anyone within your network as well. Uh, so 25th of June will be actually be the work group day. It's a new format for work groups, task forces, and special interest groups and other side meetings that'll be going on on that day. And it's an opportunity, it's a separate opportunity for, for delegates to engage in discussions and share your experiences with peers and experts. You can sign on for that day as you sign on for the the main event. So next course, Love Your Eyes, will be ongoing this year. World Side Day will fall on October 10th. Um, there's still massive potential to maximize this, uh, the Love Your Eyes at Work, as we mentioned, and the outcomes of the International Labour Organization policy brief. Um, and as we finalize the themes around Love Your Eyes at Work or Love Your Eyes Kids, um, we'll keep you updated on what that means and the activities that we have, that we'll have planned. The next thing I briefly want to explain is, um, so last year, we had some reviews on how member engagement groups are structured. Um, so member engagement groups refers to the different group types in which members can engage with each other and the Secretariat at IPB. So we have 17 groups and they fall under four group types. Um, they're highly valued, as you can see by the, the feedback. 85% um, of people would recommend the groups to people within their network. But despite these positive feedback, there are some areas that um, were considered that improvements could be applied to. So these are the six uh, major re main recommendations. And it was also recommended that the variety of group groups should be rationalized. So the first is into, we'll establish two work, two groups. The first is work groups. And the second is strategy implementation groups. 
So the work groups are initiated and guided by engaged IEPP members aiming to advance the objectives outlined in the 2013 site strategy. The scope can include advancing areas of the strategy, promoting knowledge, best practices related to eye health, leveraging the collective expertise and insights of the membership. The strategy uh, implementation groups, they will be initiated and led by the Secretariat with the goal of action in specific elements of the strategy. So the group will typically be made up of IPB staff, some subject matter experts and relevant members. Um, the primary function will be to support and guide strategy implementation. Now, this is still um, being discussed in terms of how it's going to be implemented. Um, so communications is planned to be coming to everyone before June. Um, so even if it seems a bit vague, we'll, we'll make sure to update you with some clear information uh, later on. And like that, that is everything. So I'll stop sharing my screen if anyone has any questions. Any questions either from what you've heard from Dami or anything that's occurred to you about what I was saying earlier as well? In which case, we're not going to hold people here unnecessarily. Um, but thank you very much indeed for uh, for joining us today. Um, and if something does occur to you uh, the moment we've pressed leave and ended the event, do feel free to drop either Dami or me a line. We're very we'd be very happy to um, uh, uh, answer any questions. Uh, we're likely to hold another one of these at some point in the next few months. So so do come and join us again. And I shall say again, I hope that we will be able to see um, uh, many of you in Mexico in June. So thank you very much indeed. And bye nice bye. to see you all. Thanks. Thank you all. Bye.